Davis.
for an hour because of the continued American presence, shoots down the demonstrators. Is that really a recommendation for intervention in the Middle East? It's a standing disgrace that they can even begin to talk in these terms. The people who last week, not a month ago, not a decade ago, not two decades ago, last week armed President Gaddafi, praised President Gaddafi, Gaddafi gave him, lauded him in the academic institutions of this country. Those people are going to tell us that they are now on the side of the people battling for freedom against Colonel Gaddafi? Really, leave it out. Leave it out. It's not credible. Not for a second is it credible that you people who armed, trained, backed, financed, praised, fated the dictators of the Arab world have a minute to say anything about freedom and liberation. Please leave it out. It's not credible. It's not credible. And people in this country know it's not credible. And they won't stand for it. That's my belief. We will not stand for it. to Malta, rather than open fire on their own people. One Libyan pilot ejected from his own aircraft and crashed it, rather than, open, rather than open fire on his own people. Two days ago, the revolutionary forces, God knows how they did it, brought down one of Gaddafi's aircraft. Now that's a no-fly zone. That is a no-fly zone. Because we know that if they get a toehold in a liberated Libya, it will be for only one reason only. They want to get back what they lost when they lost Gaddafi. They want to get back the deals with BP. They want to get back the foothold in the area. They want to have the influence. And that's not what these revolutions have been about. They have been about self-determination about democracy, about throwing off imperialism, about throwing off the dictators who did the deals with imperialism. So that's our business. Our business is to stop Western intervention in the Arab revolutions, to stop the imperialists getting their hands back on the resources of the countries where the people, for the first time in generations, have a chance to determine their own, their own future. And by the way, they're doing rather well. They're doing rather well. Look at the depth of this process. This is the, the second, the hopeful side of this, of this equation. If we can keep the vultures off their backs, they are doing absolutely brilliantly, and it's not over yet. Not over there, yet. So I was in Tunisia just over a week ago. And because, in my view, because the Egyptians, a week after, they got rid of Mubarak, and I was there on that day, and that was a terrific day, but in my view, it was also a terrific day, when a week later, they went back in two million numbers into Tahir Square to say, we want the demands of January the 25th, and they went back a week later. But I'll tell you what the effect of it was in Tunisia, they went back to here on the Friday, and on Saturday, in Tunis, for the first time since the fall of Ben Ali, they went back into the square in the centre of Tunis as well. And because they'd seen the tents in from here, they brought their tents with them, and they stayed there, and the demonstrations grew through the week, so that by the end of the week there were 50,000. And then what happened? Ganoushi, the replacement for Ben Ali, he went as well. And not only did he go, but the first minister of the Western government, the French foreign minister, because he backed Ben Ali, that she, she went as well. Now that's pretty good going. <laughs> Two dictators, a replacement dictator, and a French foreign minister. Now that's not bad going for a couple of weeks. I think we can do it well. And Libya deepens this process in a different way. 
Because Libya, because the regime was dug in, because it's deploying the full weight of a modern military army against its own people, this is a revolution which is taking the form of a civil war. And some revolutions do take the form of civil wars. Actually, the English Revolution of the 17th century was a civil war. The Spanish Revolution was a civil war. And it deepens the process in this way. Necessarily, when you have liberated territory in a civil war, the old state machine is completely gone. It's not an argument about how much army, how much reform, how quickly, when will the elections be, should there be a constituent assembly, should the old order be there, shall we jail the ex-ministers, suddenly it's all gone. So Benghazi is now the freest city in the world because its own people are running it. 20 like Barcelona in 1936, its own people have taken control of Benghazi and that won't be lost on subsequent revolutions and no revolution now will want to fight less to give up before they've given as much as the Libyan people have given and now they're organising themselves militarily to advance on Tripoli. Now this is a profound process, it was profound when it happened in Tunisia it was deepened by what happened in Egypt. It was deepened by what happened in Tunisia when they copied Egypt and went back into the square. And it's deepened again by the fact that those people in Libya are fighting, are fighting on a scale that even their precursors didn't fight on, losing more than they lost in order to gain their freedom. And because they are willing to give that much, because the revolution is on this kind of scale, because it will still spread, I mean, I just want to say this because I like saying it. Last Friday, uh, because I never thought I'd say these words, last Friday there was a day of rage in Saudi Arabia. Now, for people who are willing to fight this much, who are conducting an international revolution which is redrawing the global power relations, can we do less? than stop our government mapping up their revolution? Can we do less than stop our government ruining this revolutionary process, trying to bleed it of its vitality, trying to destroy it, trying to get back in there to get the money and the oil and the profits and the corporate business all starting up again? Can we do less than defend that process by stopping our government interfering in that? I don't think we can. Not only that, it's our future. Look at the relationship between Cairo and Madison. You know, when they hold up a sign in Tahir Square saying solidarity with Wisconsin, and when in Wisconsin the Courthouse, the, the sign is bring Cairo to Madison. When the Egyptians, and I'm sorry for the Egyptian comment, but I think only Egyptians would do this. When the Egyptians phone up Wisconsin, and order pizza and send it to the courthouse. <laughs> um, that's a brilliant form of solidarity. <laughs> it's about all our futures. We all have the same friends and we all have the same enemies. So let's unite and stop the Gaddafis, the Mubaraks, the Camerons. Yes, and the Obamas, let's stop them interfering in this revolutionary process which is our future as well as their future. Thank you very much for the And for all the work